Welcome to today's webinar. This is a recording of a webinar conducted March 14th, 2024, covering Grants Portal and ME decommissioning. We'll start with an update on new events that are in Grants Manager and Grants Portal only. And for that update, I'll hand it over to Franklin. Hi folks, my name is Franklin Roberts. I'm a senior business analyst in the business architecture section. We are the folks that take care of Grants Manager and Portal. And so I have some updates about how Grants Portal is going to work in the next year. So as of January 15th of this year, 2024, all new events are going to be set up in Grants Manager and Grants Portal GMGP only. For those events, and this has been the case for more than just this year, PDMGs are going to be required for all applicants. So there won't be any direct application going forward. And for category A, B, and Z projects, they will use their respective streamlined project applications in place of the EEIs. The last thing to add is for these events, obligation and closeout will be done in Grants Manager and Portal. Thank you, Franklin. Next, we're going to be talking about some reports that used to be in EMI and how they're going to look in Grants Portal. And for that, I'll hand it over to Guillermo. So hello, my name is Guillermo Ramirez. I'm from the Business Architecture team and the Program Design Branch. And I am presenting uh, reporting functionality for Grants Portal. Uh, when deciding to recreate reports from EMI into Grants Manager Grants Portal, uh, we analyze the relevancy, need, and audience for each of the reports that were available in EMI. In that process, we determined that equivalent information to some reports can be obtained from these pages. So we will be presenting those reports. In other cases, we develop reports that try to resemble as close as possible the functionality that existed in EMI. Uh, one of the things we can acknowledge in this process is that EMI and Grants Manager, Grants Portal, are systems whose goal is to keep track of all that is required to support awards for public assistance, but that the workflows for both systems, though similar, are not the same. And for that reason, we can talk about equivalent information as alternatives to the data that was obtained from EMI. In many cases, the values named are exactly the same and stand for the same thing, but in others, Grants Manager, Grants Portal, adopted a new name and we will see that through reporting. The other thing I wanted to mention is that this table is focused on front-end reporting. So these are the reports that we have to log into the system to download. So for the reports that are scheduled to feed the recipient, state, tribe, and territory systems, we defer to the support provided by the Recovery Reporting and Analytics Division team, also known as RAP. So now I will quickly go through the table. The project worksheet report, D1, generates a list of project worksheets for each applicant. It displays the project amount, bundle number, review, completion, and obligation dates. And information equivalent to the D1 can be found in the project list page. This report has also been used as part of the recovery transition meeting, and we have incorporated a table in the recovery transition process that shows the count of projects by project size and category that this report would have provided. The S1 Public Assistance Grant Summary Report and P5 Public Assistance Grant Summary, the S1 and P5 are similar in that they provide visibility on awards, the S1 summarizes some of the information, and the P5 provides visibility on awards at the most granular level. The S1 will not exist in Grants Portal. However, the P5 exists, and users may aggregate specific fields to meet their needs. Grants Portal also allows an Excel export of this information, while EMI did not have the export capability. The applicant status report provides project level information for obligation dates and status of each project, and it does not provide financial amounts. And equivalent information can be found from the project list page. 
the S5 public assistance summary report is uh, known in grants manager as the event projection report. This report was not recreated in grants portal. The report provides visibility on the national spend plan for projected amounts for the event by category of work. It only exists in grants manager, not in grants portal, as the information is estimated and used by FEMA to ensure that there is available funding for obligation. If the need is confirmed, we can create a grants portal report to provide the recipient visibility on the overall event projection amounts. But initially, it has not been determined to be absolutely essential for the migration transition process. The P2 project application grant report provides visibility on approved amounts and activity completion deadlines at the project level. This report also provides a summary of facility names, location, and scope of work. Equivalent information to this report exists in grants portal in the applicant profile report, which we can reach through the applicant profile page. The only limitation we are aware of is that the P2 can display the scope of work for multiple projects and the applicant profile report does not include the scope of work. One of the advantages of Grants Manager and Grants Portal is that text entered in the scope of work section is marked up by HTML and this formatting is very helpful to read the text, but at the same time, it does not lend itself for displaying large quantities of information in the same page. So the project report is available from the project page and will meet this need of providing the scope on a project by project basis. So the P4 project completion and certification report allows recipients to certify along with the applicants that work has been completed. This is normally used to support the closeout of those small projects not needing to go through the closeout inspection report process. We are developing an equivalent report, but until the report is available for those events that are transitioned to operate from Grants Manager Grants Portal, the equivalent information can be provided in a document, and we have developed a template that can be shared to facilitate this process. The P5 provides visibility on all accepted award transactions for a particular event, and the report is in the intelligence section, OCFO reports. And like mentioned before, the S1 will not exist, but users may aggregate specific fields from the P5 to meet the reporting needs on all of the award transactions. And the last two reports in the slide are against manager only reports that are not relevant to this presentation, but one provides visibility of applicants and project accounts that remain open to facilitate identifying the status of an event for closeout, and the other provides visibility of the fixed number of all organizations to facilitate identifying duplicates. And that is a summary of the reports that are available and the location of these reports in Rents Portal. Thanks, Guillermo. And now for our last bit, we're going to talk about some additional support in this ME decommissioning process. And for that, let's go to Beth. Hi, I'm Beth Janbergs from the Change Management and Integration section at FEMA headquarters. To support the transition from ME to GMGP, we recently released an updated Frequently Asked Questions document. This FAQ is available on FEMA.gov. As we continue communicating with our partners about this change, we will be collecting questions that regularly arise and preparing additional updates to the FAQ. So our other presenters, and now we'll just end with some compliance information. To report corruption, waste, fraud, abuse, mismanagement, and or misconduct, contact the Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General by phone at 1-800-323-8603 or via the website or mailing address listed on the screen now. Procurement requirements are among the most complicated parts of the PA grant process, and noncompliance can result in deobligation of funding. 
please make sure that you are following FEMA's procurement guidance for recipients and subrecipients. Federal requirements for procurement and contracting are described in 2 CFR Part 200. The Procurement Disaster Assistance Team, or PDAT, offers some training and tools on their website, www.fema.gov slash grants slash procurement. Thank you for watching.